Hello, uh, my name is uh, Sri Kantaraja. I am uh, working at Homerton uh, Fertility Center as the lab director. Today I am going to talk about uh, oocyte development and maturation inside the ovary. Uh, to start with, I think it's always better to see some diagrams. Uh, it is easier to explain. So you all know about uh, the follicular development inside the ovary. It all started with the primordial follicle and then the growing follicle, antral follicle and then the mature follicle, Raphian follicle. In a normal cycle, when it matures, the egg is released, but in a stimulated cycles, you put the needle in here and aspirate the uh, follicular fluid, hoping to get the egg as well. Now, that is the follicular development. It's interesting to find out what's inside or what is happening to the egg itself, the ova. So for that, I think it's better to know a little bit of cell division. So I'll just uh, take you through, right, okay, before that. We all know that in the primordial germ cell, migrate from the primitive, primitive streak into the gonads, in this case ovary, at the fetal life, and then it multiplies and forms millions of uh, oogonia or germ cells. And in week seven of, uh, sorry, in week 22 of gestation, there are about seven, eight million, and then it comes down to two million at the time of birth, and again, uh, it comes down to six, six, 600 to 700 or 800 uh, thousand at the time of puberty. So what happens to the remaining ones? They try to grow and there is no uh, pituitary hormone, so they uh, go to go uh, atres atresia, right? Now, regarding cell division, we know that there are two types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. Sorry, it's not very clear, but that doesn't matter. The basic thing is in mitosis, one cell divides into two. And the number of chromosomes is the same in the parent cell and the daughter cells. So 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, it's the same here. The difference in meiosis is one cell divides into four. And so that means it has first division and then second division. So that is why it has meiosis one and meiosis two. So that's the basic difference. And here in the meiosis one, the chromosomal number is halved. So 46 becomes 23 haploid. And finally, what you are going to get here is 23 chromosomes. So this, this division, meiosis happens only in the germ cells in the body. All the somatic cells, all the other somatic cells have mitotic division. Now, if you take meiosis inside the ovary, or uh, in the female, I hope you can see this. So, in ovary, we call it as oogenesis, and in uh, testis is spermatogenesis. So, we are concentrating on oogenesis here. So, in the fetal period, what happens is the oogonia, millions of them, they start to grow and First, they undergo mitotic division to form uh, several of these primary oocytes, or the uh, germ cells. And then, sorry, actually they grow and then in size and form the primary oocytes. And then, just before birth, these <coughs> oocytes start the meiotic division. They start the meiotic division, but then it is arrested at the prophase, prophase one. And after birth, nothing happens in childhood. So this still arrested at the same prophase one during childhood. Again, follicles grow. They tend to grow, but there is no pituitary hormones to continue the growth. So they go, uh, most of the uh, follicles go uh, atresia but the eggs remains in the prophase one. Then what happens after puberty? Now the 
After puberty, each month, several follicles recruited, the oocytes inside then start to develop to the next stage. So the prophase 1, from pro prophase 1, they move on. So in each cycle, just before ovulation, they start the cell division from that stage, prophase 1, to metaphase, uh, anaphase, and telophase. So that completes the first meiotic division and then it forms two cells. So at the time of ovulation, what you in normal ovulation, what you get is one egg in the mature follicle and that is a mature egg. So you will see the two cells, that is the egg and the polar body. So that is also a difference between spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Here when the cell divides, almost all the cytoplasm go into one cell and the other one is just a nucleus with little cytoplasm. That's the polar body. So that's in normal. So if you see the follicles here, the primordial cells are in the primordial follicle, then primary follicle, secondary follicle, and once it's mature, the egg is released. At that stage, they are in metaphase 2. Actually, when it divides, it doesn't stop with the meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 completes and meiosis 2 starts and then it's again the egg is arrested or stopped at metaphase 2. Although this is shown here, primary oocyte and then secondary oocyte, this actually completed the meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2 starts and then stops at metaphase 2. Then only after a sperm enters, then it, it is activated and then it completes the second meiosis by releasing the second polar body. That's called fertilization. Now, if you, although here it is short between primary oocyte and secondary oocyte, when you see this one, you can see in meiosis is meiosis 1, meiosis 2. So in each one, you get prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Right. So at the time of birth, eggs are arrested at prophase 1. Nothing happens until puberty. Until puberty, nothing happens. After puberty, when the eggs and follicles mature, just before ovulation, this prophase then moves on to the next stages. So first, the germinal vesicle membrane breakdown. So that is why you don't normally see germinal vesicles in a mature follicle or mature egg. So germinal vesicle breaks down and then you go through this stage and then that is where you get the first polar body and the egg. But it doesn't stop, it continues and then it stops here, metaphase 2. Still two cells, egg and the polar body and only after sperm enters it completes its division. Now, if we, when during a stimulated cycle, what happens? Many follicles are recruited, many eggs are growing, so they are going, not all the follicles grow at the same growth rate. Some follicles grow faster, others go slow. So you are going to get different size of uh, maturation of eggs inside as well. But you are trying, to, normally you find an optimum time to go in and get maximum number of mature eggs. That is the aim in stimulated cycles. But during egg collection, almost all the follicles are aspirated, irrespective of the size, or at least more than 10, 12 millimeters. So we are going to get eggs in different stages. So when we look under the microscope, we see eggs with uh, uh, very fluffy cumulus cells. So by looking at that, we can say it is tend to be a mature egg, so we should see a polar body, metaphase 2 eggs. But sometimes we get very immature eggs, we, here you can see germinal vesicles. So it, this is almost like at the time of birth, where the eggs are arrested in prophase 1. So even germinal vesicle was, has not, the membrane is not broken down. And this is very immature, uh, sorry, it, this is a post-mature egg. Now, if we remove these cells and see the egg inside, 
So that is the egg and cumulus cells. If you remove them, if the egg comes from a mature follicle, it should have the first polar body. And if it's the stages or the identification, we can see only whether it has a polar body or not, then we say metaphase 2. If the polar body is not there, we say it's metaphase 1. So it is far behind. And here, even the nuclear, the membrane is not broken down, so that's germinal vesicle. So these are the things which we can look for, but if you look behind that, the metaphase 2 egg is here. It could be here or it could be here. So from this stage, you will see one polar body and the egg. So even though you are seeing a polar body, it could be very early stage, just finished its first meiosis, or it is at this stage, meiosis 2, it has moved. If you see, if you don't see a polar body, that means you are looking at here, right? So because it's only one cell, polar body is not released. So there is a series of the maturation happens here, although we see only metaphase 2 or metaphase 1 or germinal vesicle. This is the reason why when we collect eggs and attempt to fertilize, we can see the polar body, then we say metaphase 2 eggs. Then we inject these eggs with sperm and then some of the eggs fertilize, some of the eggs don't fertilize. So that is the reason behind this, because if an egg has come to this stage and ready to receive the sperm, we inject, it fertilizes. Or when the IVF, when the sperm goes in, is fertilized. If it's very early stage of metaphase, two, it may not fertilize. So even though it's a mature egg we are injecting, it may not fertilize because it's slightly behind. And if it's germinal vesicle, it will. It's very difficult for that egg to come to this stage. So only the metaphase ones. <coughs> Sometimes go to metaphase two in the afternoon. We inject, but the results are always poor because it should mature inside the follicle. That should be our aim. If an egg matures inside the follicle, the fertilization rate is good, the development is good, we get good embryos. If we don't have enough eggs, sometimes we are desperate, so we look for the maturation outside the after egg collection, metaphase ones, move to metaphase two, then we inject very poor fertilization. We say cytoplasmic maturation is not there, that's true as well, but even the nuclear maturation is, is not the same for all the eggs. Once we inject or attempt uh, try to fertilize by IVF, so that is the metaphase 2 egg. After an egg goes in, it releases the second polar body, then we know it's fertilized, and at the same time, we'll see the male and female nucleus. And at the same time, we get abnormal fertilizations as well. So that is what we see on day one. If it's fertilized, we will see two clear pronucleus and two polar bodies. And that is 3 pn, where yeah, you can see the nucleolus, but this is only 1 pn, that's a vesicle, just to differentiate. So that is about uh, the egg maturation and fertilization. And uh, yeah, thank you.